Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa is still dragging its heels in finalising its approach to cleaner fuels. Terence Kremer joins me now to discuss the implications. Welcome Terence. Hi Sam. Um, South Africa is meant to transition to even cleaner fuels in the middle of next year. Can we make the deadline? Well, at this stage, it doesn't look like our local industry, our local fuel industry, can meet that deadline. It's been a deadline for many years that we set for, I think, July 1, 2017. We had moved to higher specification fuel based on the European standard, I think it's Euro 5, where you take a lot of the pollutants out as well as, so there's the, the whole benefit of lower pollution in the atmosphere for health reasons. But also there's a benefit for the, the automotive industry where it's a lot of the, the technically the newer engines require these fuels. So to meet that deadline, we need to do an overhaul of our um, refinery fleet um, and or we have to build a new refinery if we want to supply these fuels domestically. So unless we've started with shovels in the ground well, for a new refinery, which we haven't, and unless we've started upgrading the existing seven refineries across the country, we can't meet that deadline domestically. So it's an issue of, uh, is that deadline going to be enforced? And if it is, the only way we can bring in the cleaner fuels that, it, that uh, the automotive industry is clamoring for, and from a health perspective that we should all desire, um, is to start importing even more. And what would be required for South Africa to supply these fuels domestically? Well, it would require of the refining fleet that exists, so we've got two refineries down in uh, in Durban, we've got a refinery in Cape Town, then we've got one in the Free State, uh, as well as we've got the gas to liquids refinery at Mossel Bay and the coal to liquids refinery at Secunda. And these together can produce around 700,000 barrels a day. So for those uh, refineries, most of which were built in the 50s, to be able to produce at these, these higher specification fuels, they would need to undergo about a $5 billion upgrade across all, all of the refineries. Now, without that, they, they can't produce either the diesel um, or the petrol that meets these specifications. And it's also being made clear that these, these upgrades will take some time. Now, this, will be, this is the second time we're going through a cleaner fuels uh, iteration. The first iteration was cleaner fuels one, and the refineries had to do major investments then to meet the current specifications. This would be even more. Uh, um, and it's, they, re they require basically uh, some sort of cost recovery mechanism to enable them to make those investments. So that's what they need to do. It's a big investment and it's time, both of which uh, both the money is uncertain as well as the time is getting very, very short. And what are the implications of the delay for refiners and for South Africa? Well, the delay for refiners, I think what we're getting a warning from the South African Petroleum Industry Association, which represents all these big oil companies. So it's the big household names that we know, the uh, Sassels, uh, the Totals, the Shells, the BPs. You know, all these companies are really large and significant. And then we also have Chevron. Now, Chevron, we know, is really wanting to exit its refining in, refinery in Cape Town. And, uh, you know, that's part of a corporate decision that they've made. But I think what the warning is from the SAPIA is that all of these refineries, unless clarity is given, policy is certainty and given, and importantly, a way to recover the cost of this investment, is these investments will not be made. And therefore, we must expect that over the next five to 10 years that this refinery fleet will probably have to shut because it won't be able to compete. So South Africa will therefore be totally exposed to the, imp the importation of, of fuels we're already seeing a massive rise in the, uh, the importation of cleaner fuels to keep our, our petrol stations wet at the moment. Because we are, uh, for instance, in petrol, our, our refineries are geared up to, pro to provide 93 octane. Many, many of the new drivers want uh, 95 octane. A lot of that is already being imported, as is some, a lot of the diesel. So there's, uh, we're already in a situation where we're importing. The, the, the warning is that this could get to a point where all of the refineries can no longer compete. You know, the cost of production as well, if you don't do these upgrades, is, is going to get higher. They're going to be relatively uncompetitive towards, uh, against some of these very new um, uh, refineries that uh, are hitting their straps at the moment out of Asia. And uh, we're going to be, they're going to battle to survive and their margins are going to come under pressure anyway. So it's, a, it's really decision time. And it's, it's, I think it's, 
uh, emblematic of what's happening generally in the energy sector. There's just a lack of decision making at the moment across so many fronts, whether it's the independent power producers, the integrated resource plan, our gas to power plan, um, you know, whether it's the future of uh, Petro SA and how that's going to, to sustain itself in the absence of gas. We just have so many balls in the air and there's so much uncertainty that uh, I think this is just another one. But the warning is unless we make a decision, unless there's a cost recovery mechanism, well, there is a discussion around the cost recovery mechanism and uh, Treasury has proposed to the refiners an accelerated depreciation incentive. They're not happy with that. So it's almost back to the drawing board there. So, you know, there's so many things, so many uncertainties um, that I think that to expect investors to uh, put down money in that context, it's just not going to happen. And that goes for not just the uh, f liquid fuels refining sector, it goes for across the energy sector as a whole. So we need some decision making out of the Department of Energy. We need some leadership and we need it quite urgently. Thank you, Terence. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.